is talking about, I fall into the play, right? When you say Dr. Brimhall, I fall into the play aspect, play time of setting the schedule. Um, just because of the, the physicality um, of what I teach. But um, a lot of people are very scared of yoga. I'm gonna talk about a yoga pose and even meditation. Um, people are very, they don't know how to do it. They feel, I think a little possibly turned off to it. So what I'd like to bring today is just ways, very simple ways that you could kind of ground yourself and have that pause and then you're able to pivot. I love it as well, Lori. Um, so what I wanted to start with is just talking a little bit about, um, you know, our minds, especially when, when it is chaos, the mind is just whirling, thinking, the mind is always thinking, thinking back, thinking forward, working. So really in a nutshell, the philosophy on meditation is just stilling the mind, having one point of focus to still the mind so you can be present right here and right now. And all of my training says that is where the peace and the bliss lies. And that's why when people practice yoga, they're like, there's, I can't believe how wonderful I feel. And a lot of it is that they just have this centeredness and they are present and they just feel incredible. Um, so it's, you have to work up to meditation. Lori's kind of a meditation expert. So I'm going to just kind of introduce something easy that you can do if you've never meditated. Um, I'm more in the physicality of yoga, but I do teach athletes and uh, we talk about how to get present so they can perform and get it done under pressure. So this can go to all of you out there where if your mind is just wandering, you're feeling like maybe you even might have a panic attack, your heart is racing, you know, whatever it is that you can just kind of get yourself back to that pause button. So um, really you can get there with a the breath. And the easiest way to describe um, the breath um, is that you, wanted, you want to take a deep breath from your lower belly, like really low, and inhale through your nose, and you draw it up into your chest. Your chest will expand. Maybe you hold for a moment, and then exhale back out through your nose from top all the way pressing out through the bottom. Most of us, and I'll repeat that again, but most of us, the way that we breathe, normal people who really don't focus on their breath is very uh, rapidly, okay? When you breathe rapidly, it almost creates like a panic. It can create chaos. If you're just gasping and breathing in through your mouth and it's very fast, it can actually create chaos. Um, and then people breathe very shallowly from their chest as well. And that can also bring a little bit of uh, panicky chaos. So with the yoga breath, like I said, it is in through your nose, deep from your lower belly, and it comes up through the nose, this long, beautiful breath, and then you'll exhale out through the nose, pressing it out. Um, so honestly, if you guys out there are feeling panicky, I have some friends who have panic attacks or are feeling very overwhelmed right now, I literally will say, lay down, Take five to 10 deep breaths and you will feel better. And it honestly, it's crazy how effective it is. So I'm really into keeping things simple. I'm into keeping things um, that everybody can do. If you can breathe, you can do this. So that is kind of my, Lori's gonna go into more of the breath, but that is a very simple and effective way to get yourself present, to kind of clear it out and be able to get to that pause place. So you can pivot and you could experience a little bit of joy and peace in your life. And it's being present and not worrying about what happened, what's coming. Let's just live right here. Cause this is really all we have right now is we have right here and right now. How does that sound? You guys think that that is something new as everybody know that, or hopefully I'm bringing some value to you. Good, okay. So the other thing that I was going to bring up, I said that I would show a couple of yoga poses um, that when um, we get really stressed, we hold a lot of tension in our hips. Um, so tension, stress, traumas, um, stressors, they are held in our hips. So uh, what I do with people who have trauma or they're under a lot of stress is that I will tell them um, show them poses that are hip openers. And again, um, I'm going to introduce the most simple hip opener. And I did work with Dr. Brimhall at his office. 
And I showed him one of these, but I'm going to show it a more simple version because I don't, I know I was sitting there with him, so I knew he could do it. Um, but um, I'm going to show you a figure four and I'm sitting in a chair. Can you see my legs? Yep. And all you are going to do is bend into your right knee and bring your right foot on the top of your left knee. So I'm just sitting, um, this is a seated figure four and I'm trying to work my right knee open. Okay, so if you have a chair, um, I'm sitting on a chair right now. Um, you will feel your right hip opening up, externally rotating. And basically what this is doing for you is it is releasing tension and stress. And then as you're doing this, you can incorporate that same breath that we just talked about. Okay, and then really bringing attention to your breath and maybe where you're feeling it. Okay, and with the breath too, a little add on, is that um, you'll inhale just like things that are positive for you, peace, joy, what you want from your life. And when you exhale, just try and imagine that you're exhaling out tension, stress, anxiety, whatever's going on in your world that's no longer serving you. All of that is let go on your exhale. Um, and you always wanna do both sides. So you'd maybe take five to 10 breaths with that. And then you would work uh, the other side. And um, I did work with a guy, I have a golfer's class on Monday nights that I'm teaching in a park. And just this simple figure four, um, he was able to, after two classes, like I guess he had really intense sciatica issues. And he was like, I'm bringing every single person I know because my sciatica is completely gone. So it's, if you guys know anyone out there that maybe fights that, um, this is an excellent way to um, overcome it. Okay, so again, this is figure four. In our next talk, I'll show other variations of figure four, but I thought I would just kind of start simple and easy. Um, just remembering that your foot is flexed. So your foot is flexed and your um, left foot is just right above the right knee. Okay, so that's kind of figure four. That should help relieve some stress. And then I'm gonna kind of bring it down on the floor here. Um, and this was Dr. Brimhall. We worked this one, Dr. Brimhall. So I hope you've been working on this. Okay, so uh, butterfly pose. So uh, butterfly looks like this. Soles of the feet come together. See, make sure you guys can see this. And you'll grab your feet, your ankles, and you're trying to bring your heels in close to uh, your body. And then you'll bring it forward. Okay, and what's really important, Lori and I were talking about this. Lori's a yoga teacher as well is to have a flat back. So when I come down, see how my back is flat? A lot of people will round and they won't feel anything. So you want a flat back and you just bring your chest forward and then pressing knees wide, as wide as you can. So you're getting a double hip opener here. Okay, this feels amazing. I sat on a plane today flying here. So um, really good way to relieve stress for me. Um, my family's pretty awesome. So I don't have any family stressors going on. I'm pretty excited to be here. Um, but here again, you would take a few breaths in this pose, butterfly pose is what this is called. And you would try and really bring awareness to where you're feeling it and try and make that long, even breath from the lower belly all the way up to the chest and then back down. Okay, so that is what I think would be an effective start um, to kind of get yourself um, just kind of grounded so you can pivot and you can make some changes. Um, does that sound like a good plan, Lori? Is that enough? I, yeah, I have a, I have a, I have an idea that I want to share. So I have had two back surgeries, and so a lot of times I would have pain, you know. And I know we're taught like, don't do the pose if it's painful. But there's a difference, right, Donna, between pain and just discomfort. So it's okay if it's a little bit dis discomfort, but you don't want it to be like pain, stop. If it's painful, don't do it. But if you're just a little like, just like uncomfortable, one of the things that I was taught in my training is imagine how much energy is in that discomfort. And if you use the breath and you breathe in and exhale through it, sometimes you can break that energy up. It's called energy diffusion technique. And so if you focus on your breath and breathe into that area of discomfort, and then exhale out, sometimes it will actually start to relieve the pain. And so in yoga, we're taught to 
inhale as we uh, like stretch or uplift and then exhale as we relax and when we go forward. So, so you're going to inhale and then exhale and then think about that discomfort and then breathe through it and stay in the pose for a little while. And it will kind of create yeah. that calm stilling of the mind. It will, because you're, you're using the mind to focus on the energy of the discomfort, right? You're not thinking about what you're doing tomorrow or so if you use that mind body connection, it will help you find that stillness that's so important. So that's really what it's about, right? Is calm. Yeah. You know, find you brought that up because um, a lot of people don't really focus on. Sorry, it cut out a little well, bit. Donna, thank but you I so like much. That, Lori, because a lot of people. I don't. know. Are, are... For sure. I'm going to go eat some tacos that my band with um, little mom little. made. Yeah. Yeah. Go enjoy your dad. Yeah, Thank you so much, Donna. All right. Thank you. Um, I'll see you later. So Dr. Brimhall, um, would you, Bye. you know, we're talking about sort of the, uh, um, hi, we have a question here. Oh, someone said, thank you, Donna. That was nice. Um, so that's even better. Uh, yeah. I want to ask you a question, if I can. We we talk a little bit about. Uh, sure. She's talking a lot about the breath and how it goes. We go into panic, and I know that that's what happens. Is our body creates a lot of cortisol and sort of that adrenal, you know, it, our what, what's happening. Can you explain to us kind of what's happening and what we can do? Can, can I share some something ideas to help us with that? Can I share something yeah, from my screen? Do it. Real quick? Yes. All right. So let me, um, let me pull this up. I, I would share this, but you asked the question, so this will actually be a good way to show you um, that question in regards to what actually happens. Um, if it will allow me to do that, and let's see if it'll, let me, um, let me see if this will let me do it. If it will, then it will be awesome, actually. So let's see. If technology works, right? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So let's see if it'll, it may or may not, um, it may not let me do it. Um, I don't think it's going to, but let me see. Yeah, if it's doing it. That. You... it's doing it. Yeah, it's sharing. Okay. There we go. Perfect. So do you guys see it says chronic stress on it? You see that? Yes. You say chronic stress. Yeah. Okay. So yes. what this is, this is a this is just slide to answer to that question you just asked. Um, and stress really does this, whether it's a, a, a stress that just happened like immediately or a chronic stress. So really, chronic stress happens in days, not 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 months or years. All right. So uh, for generations, our stress was really a result of hey. We're, we're walking through the forest, a saber tooth tiger jumps out at us, and like we have to fight or run. And so your body pumps tons of cortisol into your body to address the adrenaline, to get blood sugar running for your muscles to run or fight, right? But within minutes to maybe hours at most, right, um, the body starts saying, okay, danger's gone. Danger's gone, relax and heal, okay. But if it's in a long standing, and this stress can be physical stress, like tiger gonna eat you, or emotional stress, like am I gonna survive financially? Or it can be a nutritional stress, um, excess of bad food, or toxic environment, all these other things, right? So it becomes chronic when it happens over days and months and years. And that leads emotionally to something we call PTSD, um, or it can lead into um, physical problems from anything from, you know, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia to um, a number of things. So the question you asked, what happened with cortisol? So with stress, your body produces cortisol. What happens? Cortisol goes up, right? Which you need to have, have to happen to handle stress and DHEA goes down, which means you age faster. 
That's the bottom line. So under stress, you will age faster and you will heal slower. That's just what happens. And we hurt more. That's just the nature of the beast. And then in reference to the question you said earlier about when you have people that have a high, high, you know, more, more obesity, they don't sleep as well. That's because they don't utilize glucose well, right? And it turns into adipose tissue, right? And that's called diabetes or syndrome X or a lot of other things. At the same time, we tend to eat worse and get poor nutrition. It's called malnutrition. And malnutrition can be not less calories, can be nutrient devoid calories. All right, and it can lead, and it leads to what's called poor collagen synthesis. What that means is, is you don't heal well, and your skin looks old. That's just what happens. Um, your protein breaks down faster, and that leads to poor wound healing. You get more what's called secretory IgA. That's your immune system or antigen proliferation. That's leaky gut and allergies. So the short answer is, stress is designed to fight, flight, or freeze. All right, but it's not supposed to last very long. So at this point in time, what's happened is with the, the, the pandemic is we've already gone past a, 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 an initial stress to really chronic stress. So all of our bodies are in this state, all right? But it stays in this state at different levels based upon the choices that we make, which goes back to what Donna is talking about with the breathing and the, the yoga. Because when you're under stress, you feel tight, you don't feel loose. So when you do stretching of itself, it puts your body in a relaxed state. Um, what you do at the Valley Sleep Center, we're assessing where people are neurologically and teaching them ways to stress or to, to de-stress to help them sleep, pulls their body back into a sleep cycle or rest cycle so they can reset. What I do as a chiropractor and nutritionally and, and practicing acupuncture is I'm designing, I'm helping the body get back into the at ease state, right? I just have different tools that I use um, that we call the six steps to wellness to help address some of those things, right? But it's, there's no substitute for eating good, learning how to sleep well, putting yourself on the right schedule. Um, our job, whether it's Donna in the physical side and the breathing side, or you in the sleep side or in the medical side, we are part of the accountability partners. But the reality is I'm a coach. Like I can't go on the field. I gotta be, I gotta be my own player for me but all I can do is say, here's the rules. Like, I don't make the rules. Well, when you go under stress, this is what happens. You cannot change that part. So you have to choose whether or not you're gonna be in a stress cycle. So you, if that's partially how you're functioning and that's the world you're living in, you gotta find different solutions, find different tools and techniques to pull yourself out of it. And one of the easiest, in my opinion, is to do yoga. Because when you stretch, you pull your body out of that. Um, find different tools and techniques like you guys do at the Valley Sleep Center to help yourself learn to sleep. Find a professional that you can work with, in my mind, to work with the physical, the mental, and the biochemical side of things. And there's so many cool tools and techniques out there to do that. Um, and so I don't know if that's quite what you're looking for, but that's exactly what happens. I'm happy to see that. Thank you. So if someone wants to know more about the six steps to wellness, is that what you called it? Like, how would they get a hold of you? Like, could you share with everybody? Yeah, so for, uh, so you can, you know, just go to, uh, you know, my Facebook page, probably the just look for, you know, Dr. Brett from Hall. That's the way to find me. Um, I just want to try to put good content out there. Um, Great. I did really, tag you in the comments because <laughs> um, I, I love a few you. things that you said. Um, thank you so much. Like this, it is all about wellness and it's so important right now that our immune systems are working optimally while we're in the middle of a pandemic and that we're using these tools to find calm in this chaos. And if uh, I'd like to finish up, I wanna make sure that, you know, if you have any questions, please, you know, write them in the chat. Um, I can get back to you. If you go to valleysleepcenter.com, there's a box that pops up that says, ask a sleep coach. I'm, I would also love to coach you in any way with the sleeping. Um, that comes directly to my email only. So feel free to reach out to me there. And um, I also want to invite you tomorrow at 1230. We have Sleep to Slender. We're starting a new um, weight management program that's going to be medically supervised uh, insur insurance covered. So please join us there. And then, you know, we talked about the breath and how important it is. And uh, I'd like to end with um, this it's the first thing we do when we enter the earth, we take a breath. And it's the last thing we do before we leave the earth is take our last breath. But imagine all the breaths that happen involuntarily between those two breaths. You don't think about them. You don't 
you, you, they just happen and they create enough energy to make this entire physical body work. That's a lot of power. There's a lot of powerful healing in our breath, but we just don't even try to use, utilize it for that. So I talked a little about, you know, using that energy diffusion technique about using the breath to go to those areas of pain or discomfort. If you just have chronic pain, use your breath. Imagine your breath breaking up all of that painful center of energy. How much energy is in our pain? So much that we could use for, you know, functioning all day, every day. And, you know, a couple, a couple of these are so easy. Um, one is just tensing every muscle in your body and holding your breath for as long as you can. And then when you exhale, just relax and doing this like, you know, three to five times, even just before you go to sleep, just tense up every muscle in your body and then let it all out. Um, one of my favorite things to do, and this is crazy, talk about cortisol spike, put yourself on the floor and your feet, bend your knees and with your feet flat on the floor and lay on your back, do it in your bed if you can't get up and down off the floor and just throw a tantrum, just scream as loud as you can. Right? I mean, when was the last time that you got permission to throw a tantrum? And we, we walk around with like, well, we have to hold it together. We need to, you know, and I'm telling you, I did this with breast cancer girls in Cancun on a retreat. These girls had so much energy bottled up because, you know, they have to be strong. They are fighters. And it was so, so basically you just throw that tantrum, kick and scream for as long as you can. And then you just stop. And then you just close your eyes and you feel every tingling cell in your body. You, you visualize those cells are healing and they're creating new healthy cells throughout your entire body. Focus on your breath. Um, another thing, counting backwards, not just 10, nine, eight, seven, count sheep, right? So inhale 10, exhaling 10. Inhaling nine, exhaling nine. And count just like that with your breath. You probably won't make it to zero, falling asleep. That's a great thing to do. You probably won't make it to zero. So there you have it. Thank you everybody for joining us. Any last comments from you, Dr. Brimhall? No, but thank you for doing this. I think one of the things that people are missing disrupted is community. Um, and you taking that lead out and helping people, it's super powerful. I'm grateful for all you all that, that came on and just being part of that that action to help us all create a different level of connection. That's really what this will do for us as a world is to um, help us kind of connect in, be kinder to each other and uh, help each other through this process and other process that happens. So thank you, Lori. Yeah, and you know, one last question for everybody. What if chaos was your chance? What if this chaos was your chance? Look for the opportunity. All right, have a great night, everybody. Thank you. All right.